Next thing is priming the pan. So that you can use a regular 2F. I like to dribble just a little bit in the pan. You can see why, you know, it's a little cumbersome to use the powder horn, but it's doable. And that's why I showed you guys this where I keep it here. It's just a lot easier to maneuver that and that powder horn working around the, the lock and everything. When you prime your pan, you got the hole, the vent hole. Don't fill it all the way up and don't block all of the hole. You want the powder to go about halfway into the hole and then taper down to nothing. So when I, I'll give it a little bit of a tap to get that powder back into the hole a little bit. If you cover the hole completely up with powder and fill the pan up, there's going to be a delay because it takes a little bit of time, just a split second longer for it to burn all the way into the chamber. But by going halfway into the hole and tapering it out, it's almost an inst instantaneous let off. Go ahead and shoot this one. I can see it's a prime example where, like I said, 2F powder works just fine as, as far as priming the pan. If you notice, I'm shooting obviously on a range or if I'm practicing, I'm wearing eye protection and ear protection. Hunting with this firearm is a little bit challenging because of the fact that it's not choked. It doesn't have a choke like a normal shotgun would. It's just a straight pipe and that's because you're shooting, you can shoot lead ball in it also, so you don't want to choke in it. But there's little tricks to try, you know, that you can use to keep your shot tighter longer distance so to compensate for that one of them is like I said earlier to load more shot than powder and that's by doing that it's pushing a heavier load a little slower it doesn't want to have a tendency for the BBs to open up quite as fast now there's another trick that sometimes used for turkey hunting and especially once if you if you pattern it and you see that, let's say you, you've got your pattern, but there's a hole somewhere in there. Well, that's probably interference from one of the wads. It doesn't, it, it may or may not show up. So by using some of the heavy wads, you know, that might have a tendency to do that. So for turkey, what I'll use is I'll pour my powder in, which is going to be a little heavier, maybe an ounce and an eighth measurement. And then I'm going to use, instead of an over-the-powder card or wad, I'll use three over-the-shot wads, the thinner ones. Three of them makes up about the same thickness as one over-the-powder wad. Follow me? So, and then, let me get that in the, in the firearm first, and then I'll show you the next trick. So, I'm get my, you got my measure. So I'm going to go with an ounce and an eighth. go with right now I'm going to put two over the shot wads with the other ones two of them put that down over the powder and what that does instead of it they fly fly away faster they're lighter so once they leave the barrel they're gone no interference shove them down Next, I'm going to take another over-the-shot card, because i got two in there ready. Another one, once it all adds up, it'll be three. 
set that in there. This time I'm only going to shove it down maybe about two, three inches. So it's down two, three inches. Maybe a little longer on this one. Now I'm going to put my shot in there. Which this time I'm beef it up to an ounce and a quarter because I got an ounce and an eighth in there. A little bit more shot than powder. Okay, the next thing I'm going to use corn muffin mix. Just a regular corn muffin mix works and I'm going to dump an equal amount of, of corn muffin mix as I did lead shot. I don't drag the muffin mix out in the woods with me because turkey I usually get one shot and the follow up, after a follow up shot I just load it regular. So put the corn muffin mix in. Now, the reason I use, the reason to use the corn muffin mix, it's got fats and sugars in there and it's ground real, real fine. And that, what that's going to do is help pack the BBs in there. So I'm going to tap it and keep tapping it, keep tapping it, working it up. And what's going to happen is the BBs are going to start rising up through there. I'm going to watch it. I'm tapping in there. Regular cornmeal doesn't have all of the fats and the sugars that are in there. So, um, corn muffin. And once it gets to the point, keep tapping it, where you're going to see some BBs rise up to the top. That means it's it's all the way worked down through there. Okay, so it's all worked down through there. I'm not going to show down in the barrel, but the BBs will kind of work and it's kind of mixes and set, seats itself down in there. And what's going to happen when the shot goes out, all that muffin mix and the shot together is going to keep it tighter for a lot longer going out the barrel. And then all I'm going to do is, since it's down to just here, I'm going to go ahead and, and put an over-the-shot card on it. And then just shove the whole works down. few times make sure it's all seated down at the bottom this involves a lot of playing around on your part as far as mixing and matching and coming up with whatever load that works best with you you know the easy part about it with uh, with this is you can play with it instantly you don't have to buy 10 different boxes of shotgun shells with different loads in it you just play around with it right on the spot in the range and, and pattern it. Go ahead and shoot this one off. A little bit more kick because I had a little bit more juice on it. That pretty well covers the basics of shooting shot out of this firearm. Like I said, it's up to you to play with it, come up with your own loads that works best for you. Trial and error in the field and hunting environment is the best way to do it. Next load is, is a round ball, which is what I use for deer hunting. I'm going to start out with 80 grains. Actually, I know what my load is because I've worked it up, patterned it, found out which shoots the best in 80 grains with 590, 5 caliber.
patched ball does a pretty good job. And that's that's what I got my powder measure set at is 80 grains. And so that's what I'm using. Like I said patched round ball is going to be loaded just the same way as you would normally would. The difference between when hunting with this, it's not rifled. So your distance, you're not going to get the same distance and accuracy as you would be from a rifled, using a rifled barrel. But how far is your average deer shot anyways? It's around 20, 25 yards. I, I don't know how accurate you can get or how, what distance you can with, with practice, but I know at the National Muzzle Association National Shoot, um, at Friendship, they're shooting these smooth bores. I'm thinking out to 80, 80 yards is what the last time. It's been a few years back, and and I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but they were doing it, competing at out to 80 yards. That's that's a good ways out there for us. You know, like I said, it it doesn't have a rear sight, so it's just like a bead up front. So start with a patch. I put the sprue up for the round ball to the top. This time you're going to need um, a ball starter. Set it in there. Get it started down in there. Normally I'd have my patch knife hanging on my neck. I'd have to get the pocket knife out. Trim my patch off. Again with smooth bore. I don't know how really critical you're going to get it. It's up to you. I've noticed that I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to, you know, like I said, powder, patch ball and side it in so and the, you know a lot of people think that they're not very accurate at all but most of the time like in the military or back in the day in the military the ball was smaller than the bore and they didn't get a good seat because they had to make multiple shots without cleaning the barrel out and swabbing the barrel out of the the buildup of black powder. The black powder was was fouled up the firearms a lot quicker than what modern day black powder does is the way they do it or make it. So the ball was looser when it went out the barrel and had a tight rattle down the barrel. They were just trying to get lead going down down the battlefield and you're firing at big chunks of guys not one individual so the volume as lead is what they're after and then from there the accuracy issue you know people thought oh they're not that accurate but I tell you what this firearm was probably carried more in the frontier and even out west in uh, the um, Rocky Mountain fur trade area than probably rifles where after doing research you know, I come to think that, you know, the guys that lived out in the wild and depended on this gun and it just, the, the versatility, as long as there's enough, you know, flint out there on the earth for me to, to ignite it and I got some powder, I can make some, I can pretty well use anything for wadding, wasp nest, harness nest, leaves, grab me a handful of rocks, shove it down there, throw another wad over the top in a survival situation you know, uh, works, but, <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and fire this load off. That pretty well covers all your basic hunting loads. So, hope you guys learned a little bit about the versatility of a black powder trade gun. Catch you out in the woods.